This guy drives about an hour, uh, a preacher, a King James Bible being preacher, of course. And he says, I have a problem. Look at Luke chapter 20, uh, Luke, look at Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> and he said, I got to show you something that somebody showed me in the King James Bible that's a problem, and I, I, I can't explain it. And it says this in verse <clears throat> 16, talking about the Lord. And he came to, <clears throat> to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. Uh, and as his custom was, he went to the uh, synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, and, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery uh, of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. All right? <clears throat> what I just read to you, that came out of Isaiah chapter 61, and it does not match Isaiah 61. So Jesus is standing there reading from the scroll, and the scroll doesn't say what your King James Bible says in Isaiah chapter 61. There's only one answer, guys. The book's not perfect. It's got mistakes in it. Uh, now look, if I told you, to, if I said, if this was the last speaking and I, I said we're done, some of you guys that have, have beat your chest about being King James Bible believers, all of a sudden you wouldn't be so loud because... Well, I know, uh, I know two problems. I, I just can't resolve them. Uh, let me tell you about a student that I had oh, about 40-some years ago. I was teaching at a college in Ohio. Young man, well, he's, he's, I think he was older than me at that time, uh, but he was one of my students, and he came in, and he had never heard anything about the King James Bible. He got in my class, and he really got excited about the King James Bible. And then he would come into my class, and he would say, uh, somebody showed me this problem in the King James Bible. And I thought, obviously, somebody's feeding him. Somebody didn't like him being a Bible believer. I finally found out who it was. Then he would call me at his house, my house, and he'd say, um, what about this? And he'd give me one of these problems. In fact, some of what he asked me are in those other two books, the orange and red, the, black, the red and uh, yellow one. <clears throat> and I'd give him an answer. And then, then one day was the fateful day he called me. And, he, and guys, what this man said no Christian should ever say. He said, let me show you, the, let me tell you about the contradiction my pastor showed me. Now, if somebody is going to tell your church members that there's a mistake in the Bible or contradiction, it better be a lost atheistic college professor. It better be the drunk bohemian where he works. Do you understand? I mean, guys, if we're supposed to help the sheep, how can we help them by, by destroying their faith in the perfect book? And I'm telling you guys, when he said that, we said, this is, the, this is the contradiction my pastor showed me, I want to say, give me his address, and he will never bother you again. And so he started with it. He says, uh, he says well, uh, it, the first verse is this. And when he said the first verse, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, uh, that's supposed to contradict this. He goes, yeah, well, you're familiar with that. I said, yeah. He goes, what's the answer? I said, oh, no. And there was a real pregnant silence. You don't know? I said, no, I don't know. Why don't you know? I said, I don't know why I don't know. But I said, I've got that one narrowed down to three. Please listen carefully what I'm going to tell you. You might want to write these down. I don't care. I said, the reason I don't know, I said, one of the reasons I don't know is because I don't know yet. Amen. I am not... You know what's wrong with us? We make ourselves the authority, uh, and, and if I don't have an answer today, there must be a mistake in the Bible. So then we pitch the Bible out, and I'm going to tell you something, guys. If you let somebody give you a quote-unquote contradiction in the King James Bible, and you say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not, I don't believe the King James Bible is absolutely perfect. I'm still going to use it, but I don't think it's perfect anymore. And two weeks later, you get the answer for that contradiction, you will never come back to the right position because you've already surrendered your faith. So I said, I don't know, because I don't know yet. I said, maybe I'll have the answer in a year. Honest, guys, honest. 19 years 
before I got the answer for that. I got the answer. 19 years before God showed it to me. Or I said, the second one, I said, I don't know because I don't know. I said, God's not going to give one man all of, the, all of the answers. Isn't that true? So I said, look, I said, you give this contradiction. I said, some guy might have wrote an, uh, explained this in a book 20 years ago, and it's sitting on a shelf, and he's waiting for you and me to find it. So I said, it's maybe because I don't know yet, or it's because I don't know. Somebody else does. But I said, or there's the third one. Please, if you don't, if you don't remember anything I say, remember this. Somebody tell me, tell me what, uh, finish this up. Without what, it is impossible to please God. Faith. Without faith. Now, I don't believe this could happen, but let's just say it is. I don't like hypotheticals. Uh, the only thing that could change in this hypothetical is the number of questions. I say 100 to be abstract. But somebody might have 10 questions about the King James Bible, 15 questions about the King James Bible. But here's, what, here's the fact. If you could have one, if somebody had 100 honest questions about the King James Bible, not somebody has animosity toward it, not somebody that's looking at it like a lost man does, I'm going to find mistakes in it. Somebody, and I said, well, that's why I don't think you could have 100. But if you could have 100 honest questions about the King James Bible or 125, I said, you will never get any more answered than 99. You know why? Because the moment, now listen, guys, if there's somebody sitting here right now, you go, well, you know, I'm just a little bit questioning about, about this, about the King James Bible. It's okay. Because the moment all 100 questions are answered, you cease to believe it by faith, and you believe it by sight. And it does not say without sight it's impossible to please God. It's without faith. And when I said that, this guy almost panicked. And he said, you mean I got to go to my pastor and tell him I don't have an answer, but I still think the King James is perfect? I said, yep. Here's what he said. He'll laugh at me. I thought, send him to me. He will be eating out of a straw. He said, he'll laugh at me. I said, okay, if he laughs at you, ask him this question. Do you believe the originals were perfect? He'll say yes. Ask him to prove it. Guys, <clears throat> I'm sorry. If you say this, shame on you. If your faith is that the originals are perfect, you know what I call that? I call that coward's faith. You know why? Because you know what's never, ever going to happen? Ever. No one is ever going to come in this door with a big old wheelbarrow with a bunch of old manuscripts in it and say, look at this, we found the originals. There they are. Nobody's going to find the originals and then have some atheist go through and say, look at that, we found a contradiction in the originals. When somebody says, I believe the originals were perfect, what they're saying is, I am afraid. I am a coward. They put it, they have coward's faith. They put it back in the originals because they know that, that faith will never be challenged. Correct? You put it in that book. And they will, I've had them line up. They will line up to go after you. Some of them with a King James Bible in their hand. So, I'm at this, uh, I'm, I'm at old church preaching last December. This guy comes up. And I'll be honest with you guys, it's in a foyer. He wasn't attacking me. He was in the foyer. But I don't mean this wrong. You know what I get a lot of? I get that. I just had this happen about two times just last week. Somebody will contact me with a phone call or, or, or uh, an a, a, a internet or something go, I'm, I'm in a debate with somebody on the internet about the King James Bible. You need to get on it. Yeah. You know what he just said? I started a fight with a guy, and he knows more than me. How about you fighting him now? If you don't mind, guys, I am teaching four classes a week. I preached uh, all over the country, and I'm writing five books. I'm not finishing your fight. You want, that's, why I don't, I, that's why I've said it before. I don't think, I can't ever remember, I, I don't never stay, I've never started an argument over the King James Bible. I have ended a bunch of them. But it was one that somebody started with me. So, this guy, you know when he said it, he showed me this thing in, in Luke chapter 4, and he told me where it was. I didn't even look. I didn't even look. I was familiar, he said it's placed in Isaiah 50, 61. I said, okay. And I thought, well, look at it. The next night, a different guy drove two hours. And he said, uh, I used to be a King James Bible believer, but now I'm a TR man. And he said, I have a problem with this. And he said, I just, somebody just showed me this. It's, brother, I answer the questions, they come up with new questions. 
And he showed me this. Or he said this. He said, it's in Luke 417. Now, when two guys do that in two days, now I'm interested. So I said, I said, well, let's look. I said, let's look at it right now. So we look at it. I gave him the answer. I mean, that fast. It ain't that tough. This is one of the easiest things I've ever handled. In fact, both of these. Psalm 46 is, it is so easy that some of you will be ashamed you haven't answered it yourself. And in and, and Luke chapter 4, it's one that's been answered a thousand times before. So I gave him the answer. He said, what's the answer? I don't know if I'll give it to you. And, all right, I will give it to you. Have you ever heard this? Um, if I quote myself, I am free. To, I don't have, when I quote myself, I don't have to quote myself word for word. Because I know what I meant. That is a standard. An author does not have to. He can, it's called free quoting. If you quote me, you have to put it in quotation marks. What those quotation marks, you know what you're saying when you put something in quotes? You are telling whoever's reading this, I haven't changed a word. You put in quotation marks, change a word, that is crooked. So it's been, a, who inspired the Holy Spirit? Uh, who inspired the Bible? God did. Then God can quote himself anytime he wants. And, and I told him that. He goes, oh, but wait a minute. The second guy. And by the way, the next day, I had a young pastor drive five hours from Canada. And this, he's, he's a good young man. He is a Bible believer. But he said, I just had somebody show me that the other day. I mean, it was like this thing just popped up out of nowhere. It wasn't around 50 years ago. Nobody was asking about Luke chapter 4, 17 one year ago. I couldn't find it one year ago. And I said this. Now, now look, what if I said this? Well, here, here's it. Look at, look at it. Look at it, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him, uh, unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So let me ask you a question. Who wrote the gospel of Luke? I know that's a tough question. Somebody take a jump. Luke. So Luke is basically, when he's writing, is he not talking? And is he not talking under the inspiration of who? Holy Spirit. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book... He found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me, and, and it goes on. I said, you see verse 18, 19? Those words in your King James Bible are not the words that came out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. They're the words that came out of the mouth of Luke under the Holy Spirit when he's telling you where the Lord had opened the Bible to. It would be as if I said... Uh, um, and Brother Greer opened the Bible to a place in John where it says God gave his only son that uh, if you believe on him, you won't, you'll have eternal life and won't go to hell. Now, you know I just free quoted John chapter 3, verse 16, correct? But it sure wasn't in italics. You know what this guy said? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, he was a grown man. And suddenly he went like about this big, stuck his thumb in his mouth, and he went, but, but the words are in red. And I said, well, you know, when Jesus spoke, red words fell right out of his mouth. <laughs> All right, this King James guy says he loves the book. Somebody showed him that. He had a problem. He comes, says he wants an answer. When he gets the answer, he wants to refute the answer. And you know what he said exactly? You know what he said as soon as I showed him this? What about Acts 8? What about Acts 8? You guys got Acts 8? Go to Acts 8. Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch. We talked about this uh, yesterday, I think. <clears throat> uh, Philip, Philip's up in that, uh, he stops that eunuch, he starts talking to him, and look at verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shears. Anybody know what that really says? Is this, is this Isaiah 53's quote? Does anybody know the major change in what I just read from Isaiah 53? If you look in Isaiah 53, it says the lamb done before her shears. They had a pronoun problem. 
in New Testament times. And like a lamb dumb before his shears, uh, so open not uh, he not his mouth. In his humiliation, it goes on. He says, what about that? He's reading out of the copy that the eunuch has, and it's different than Isaiah 53. I said, now I'm going to ask you another deep Bible question. Don't be afraid. You're allowed to say it if you think you know it. Who wrote Acts? Luke. Same guy that wrote the Gospel of Luke, and he's doing the same thing. He is, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, free quoting Isaiah 53. When, when you read, look, look what he says. The place, can you, hear, can you hear Luke saying this? The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led of, as, as a sheep to the slaughter. Do you understand that you're not reading the words of the text that the eunuch was holding in his lap? You have Luke free quoting it. Now this guy says he loves the King James Bible, loves it, nice of him. Uh, but he's TR man. And when I showed him that, he goes, you mean you're going to accept that? I said, yeah, I'm going to accept that. And he didn't know what to say. Part of it is pride. I mean, you stump me with something, and then I go to an eight-year-old kid, and he explains it. And it kind of makes you look stupid. And he just couldn't stand the thought that his little problem was that easily answered. 